London, Europe's third largest city, a bustling, innovative and metropolitan oasis offering abundant opportunities for everyone. As you step off the tube and make your way to university or work, London's history and beauty is ever-present with its distinctive landmarks and crisp architecture. All walks of life roam London with its various range of people and cultures, having an impressive 300 languages spoken throughout. While London may be attractive to tourists and other Europeans as an iconic city that has a lot to offer, from food to art, many see London as a doorway towards a better life. London ranks 26 out of 300 major cities for economic performance. London's special combination of all these attractions and opportunities make it a much sought-after destination for legal and non-legal immigrants. Particularly, the Brazilian community has seen a rapid growth over recent years. The roughly 100,000 Brazilian people living in London today contribute about 10% of London's workforce and make up the largest Latin American group. All these 100,000 Brazilians have their very own story while sharing the same struggle for money, maintaining cultural identity and managing relationships. We will look at Juliana's fairly complex and demanding journey as an example for those people trying hard to make their luck in London. old and, and I'm from Brazil, the city of Sao Paulo. I think um, there's a lot of Brazilians in London, so um, I think everybody coming in this country to do something, normally about work, and especially me. I came because my mom was here to bring me to this country to study something. I prefer to start work than study, and then I found my ex-husband. Lots of things broke my heart, but now it's fine. I'm quite good to talk about this story now because everything's passed, the bad things passed, so now I'm good to talk about the, the story. I think uh, my country is still developing, it's very slow, the process much better here in London because of the government and the Every, every the food, everything so expensive. Um, for work, they, they don't pay you what they supposed to pay, and this is the big, big thing. Under God's protection, we shall bring prosperity and progress uh, to our people. Um, but Glauber, just like Donald Trump, uh, Jair Bolsonaro is someone. Uh, who people either love or despise, and that really does seem to be the case uh, in Brazil right now. He has his uh, adoring fans, doesn't he? We can see uh, some of them have, have turned out uh, for this inauguration ceremony. Uh, but a lot of people are worried uh, that he wants to return to the past, that he wants to return to authoritarianism, that he wants to roll back rights for minorities. Are those fears justified? Uh, in my opinion, Bolsonaro is a, is a good, very good, very good person. I think he can make the things change. But I think sometimes the things what he said about people, it's not the, the right thing to say. But I think he can make change in Brazil. I think my my place is really warm and the people is warm as well. Very communicated and friendly too. My life before I came to London was very normal and quiet because I was with my whole family, so it was much, much easier. My mom, she's leaving me there when I was like 13 with my grandmother and my father. And then um, I studied, finished school. And when I came to London, um, after eight months, my mom left me here by myself as well. And I, that's why I decided to work, not continuing studying because in this country it's very difficult when you don't have any funds. Um, normally I do receptionist but admin job but at the moment I cleaning houses and I do some extra money at home making straightening hairs. In 
Brazilian people come to work in London? Almost of the persons I know, they come for work because of the the libra, the pound is a bit high, and they come for work and to get some money to survive or to buy something at their place. Brazilians in the United Kingdom form the single largest Latin American group in the country. Within London, this is one of the biggest immigrant communities, having witnessed rapid growth, increasing almost tenfold since the 90s. Currently, there are an estimated 60,000 strewn across the city, residing mainly in Bayswater, Elephant and Castle, Vauxhall, Stockwell and Wilsdon. Many of them only intend to stay for a short time to save money, working hard, then returning to their country after a few years. While many come to study, most make use of the ethnic and cultural diversity offered by London to pursue more professional opportunities. There are a few options when wanting to obtain legality. 18 to 45 year olds from Brazil are able to apply for a work visa to the UK. Successful applicants can migrate and work in the UK permanently or temporarily. There is also the option of a student visa, while residence cards can be obtained after paying taxes for a number of years on a working visa. Many have also opted to marry a British citizen in hopes of a UK residence card, which can still be denied when applying. In Juliana's case, it is much of both, originally coming here to study, then staying in order to save up money for herself and to give her child the best life possible. My mother took me to London to study English. We go English in the school, but to be honest, I didn't learn anything over there. What I know is from here only. Juliana's mum travelled to London in early 2005 to help her family by sending back money. She didn't obtain legal status in order to make more money in her time there and avoid taxes. Many Brazilians do this by outstaying their visit. When her daughter Juliana reached 16, she decided it was in the best interest of her daughter to come to the UK to learn English, something that is not taught well in much of Brazil. After some time, Juliana received secretarial and part-time maintenance work to support herself, alongside studying, helping her mother. When I came to London, I was 16. The process was very easy because my mother is around, so she, she cooks for me and everything is more easy. She, she washes my clothes and everything. I expect London to be different from my place when it is. He is because here we got lots of jobs, you can start uh, anything you like and you got more opportunity to buy things and stuff like this. When Juliana reached adulthood at age 18, her mother flew back to Brazil to avoid deportation and to be reunited with the rest of the family while Juliana stayed in London on a student visa. Miguel, a Bolivian, also immigrated to London at an early age. With a half-Spanish background, he was able to obtain legal citizenship in the United Kingdom. I met him here. I came 11 years ago. The first week I arrived, I found Miguel, but he here six, 17 years, I think. First time I came, I was 21 years. My brother came first and then I came afterward. Uh, I left my whole family really, like my mom and my brothers and sisters, because we are a big family. Well, I believe when, you know, you immigrate to where else that you know what you're going to be doing, you know, you know what you want or you know what you want to accomplish. So I believe when people go abroad, you want to do something and then go back, but you know, it could change also, so. Was it what you Well, I just, what I knew, about well, I mean the UK it was you know like all the most important things that they say like as a, you know like you can see here like the Big Ben few things not much though but I didn't know it was going to be that like really big uh, city and all that. While there are many immigrants such as Miguel who already obtained some form of legal residency, Brazilian nationals represent the fifth largest group of illegal immigrants in the UK with up to 2,000 being deported each year. Despite their large numbers, they rarely receive much media attention, with the press tending to focus instead on immigration from Eastern Europe, Africa, 
and Muslim-controlled countries. America, the land of the American dream, seems like the obvious choice to come to. However, the USA requires one to apply for a visa before entering the country, while the UK simply asks a few questions, thus the person can easily outstay their time. After a few years, Juliana married Miguel, for love and persuasion by her family, as once married, she would obtain a residence card, making her stay in the UK more permanent. It's very difficult to, to stay with someone who is from different country or different culture, but all together this is going to be 11 years, so now we are friends. Being with another person from another country is really difficult because it's not the same culture. You know, you don't understand, you know, what they mean or what they feel. It's, it's, it's difficult, it's complicated. Four years later, 2014, the happy couple was blessed with a beautiful baby boy, Benjamin. While they had both established a stable living situation in London, Miguel missed home more than he could bear. Juliana reluctantly but supportively joined hands with her husband and the young family moved back to his country, Bolivia. Despite Miguel being happily reunited with his family, their joy was short-lived as they faced a new dilemma as Benjamin got diagnosed with autism. Autistic children, he's at a, he's a lot of spectrum, and the autistic children they are no uh, same all of them. And then Benjamin, he's they, he's diagnosed with one year and a half, and then he are um, in a medium spectrum. He's not too high and not too low, but he can't talk at the moment, so it's a lead to be high. Children with autism usually experience difficulty in three main areas, social interaction, social communication and imagination, and cognitive flexibility. Each of these diagnostic features can be present in different forms and varying degrees. Difficulties with social interaction can include not understanding the subtleties of social situations, recognizing and interpreting other people's feelings, managing emotions, or making and maintaining friendships. Two years ago I was in Bolivia. Um, my son started school after six months. The teachers say is there something wrong with him and we must go to psychologist just to have a look if everything's fine. And then um, we bring him to the psychologist. The psychologist say, oh, it's fine. Just give it time to him to, you know, to see if he can start to talk, maybe he's a delay, every children is like this, you don't need to worry. And then after this, um, I bring him to the autistic society in Bolivia. Uh, they have a, a small place, but everything's private. And then we work hard to, to make some therapies, they diagnose him, and then we try to make some therapies with him, which is so, so expensive. We run out of money, my husband getting so stressed. I I get so stressed stress as well. Difficult. Uh, I think we we got divorced at that time with uh, because of the, the because of Benjamin. You know, we couldn't handle handle it very well. It was difficult. We we were back in my country um, because even we were trying really hard to get Benjamin to work with other professionals. It was hard for her, for me. There is not much help in my country, you know, like people don't know it that well. It's not like, like in here. Yeah, it was complicated. So yeah, we have to make some like life-changing for us a decision, you know, like maybe, you know, in, you know, coming back to London or staying or going maybe Brazil, just because, you know, we have to do the diagnosis and all that. And I asked my husband to come back to London because my son is born here, so I think here the, the things works. And my husband said, no, I don't want to come back. I don't know what autism come from. I don't think my son has nothing. Very hard to him to accept. Juliana, exasperated, moved back to London hoping to receive help from the state, leaving Miguel behind, dubious on how to handle the situation. And then I come back by myself. I try to work. My family didn't give me some money, but you know, very, very little because my money is, this money is like five times from my money. So it's nothing. A friend of mine, she opened her house to me 
and she's a lovely person. She always look after me and my son. And I feel so lonely and sad. The things will be so, so hard to me. In this country, when you are by yourself, it's, it's just sad. And in my mind, I, I was just learning about autism. Every day is a different day and we can learn. But on the beginning to me, I cry a lot. Juliana, now back in London, fought her battles alone for two years as a single mum. Luckily, she qualified for assistance from the British government. In the UK, there are many benefits one can get for autistic children, such as disability living allowance, carer's allowance, child tax credit and working tax credit, housing benefit and help with council tax or rates, income support and universal credit. Juliana currently resides in West Dulwich, South London. She lives in an apartment which the government helps her pay for so she can save up for a special needs school for her son. She works in hairdressing and maintenance work. Her son has been attending a normal school, having had teachers giving him specialized attention and keeping him in a separated play area. In 2018, lonely Miguel, after much contemplation, has returned to live with her and Benjamin. I don't know, I think the love, the love is, you don't need the words, you understand. If my son is fine, if he's happy with his dad, why not? His space in Ben's life is really, really important. That's why we back together, because my son loves his dad and he tries to do everything for Ben. Everybody loves Benjamin, because everywhere, everywhere he goes, like the teachers, the doctors, they love him because he's so caring, so we get help with, you know, like with a lot of things. I, I get help with applications and, you know, like, people when they meet him, so they, they want to help him, so make things easier, you know, like, I believe that is what has been happening. So we got the school now, so he's going to be going to the school. And then in these countries, they're not free schools. Unfortunately, they are very, very expensive, but the government can pay it for you if you show them when have something, diagnosis, and when you prove everything is true, then pay the school for, for your children. That's why we are here, because we don't have a lot of funds to pay the school, and then we'll pay they will cover everything. Problem of Ben, the, the big, big problem is the food. He never get full and he always want to eat, eat, eat all the time, like home. I, we, we just need to close the kitchen because at least he wants to be in the kitchen all the time. And sometimes I'm really, really stressful in the bus when someone is eating something and he wants to take the food from the person who we don't know. And then people doesn't understand because he looks normal. His physically is normal, but he's got something on his brain which makes him confused. And maybe because he can't talk, make he, he very, very anxiety. And that's why he wants to eat all the time. One day I say to myself, I get very, very embarrassed at the bus and I say to myself, oh my God, one day I will tell these people what's happening because they just look at me and they don't understand what, what's autism. And then it's, it's so sad. Sometimes I get very, very, very embarrassed. My family always call me, send me a message. I always keep in touch with my mom and she always try to calm me down. I think I'm much, much better and I, I accept the fact my son is special needs because my mom, she's behind me all the time. Don't worry, he will be fine and my family is the most important thing for me. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of Brazilian people in this place, which I have only a few friends, but I can feel home better than my country. I was be legal, but when I went to Bolivia for a few months, like 11 months, um, I have a problem with my residence card when I come back, but now it's, it's sorted. It's fine. Life for Brazilians illegally residing in London is very difficult. Many do not speak English properly and feel isolated and alone in the British community. Many resolve this by living with or staying close to other Brazilians. 
you will usually find Brazilians living as couples or groups to keep some form of shared identity. This certainly doesn't benefit their English language proficiency, but it helps them stay grounded and keep their culture alive. Yeah, you can find some certain things here in London, like Brazilian shops, um, restaurants, you can buy clothes and bags from Brazil, like either fresh and cook, cooker, everything you can find here. Um, the things I like to do before to be pregnant, uh, going to the pub, meet my friends, especially my best friend Kayla. And... Hancho Londres is a live music event on the outskirts of London that offers drinks, food and mingling with other Brazilians. Such events, as well as Brazilian discos, restaurants and shops, make them almost forget they are living in another country. Their warm and friendly energy is what draws the English in as well, offering new experiences within their city. Um, I have been once and there is like some place, countryside, almost countryside, and then uh, bring some lots of Brazilian foods, different types, and we drink, uh, nice music, only Brazilian people. Do you feel like that's good for Brazilians in London to connect them? Yeah, I, I like so much uh, when the artists from Brazil come, like shows and stuff, and I would love to come. I always want to come because I, I enjoy so much with my family. The only thing different I have him, but we still do this kind of thing. Juliana's tale is one of many among the Brazilians who come to London for better opportunities and a better future. While her story is certainly special, it represents just one of the about 100,000 cases of her fellow Brazilians. These people, united with their warm culture and similar background, will continue to come to London, just as many have come before Juliana. Juliana has bravely overcome many obstacles, managing her ordeal by utilizing family, friends and certainly much public support. It is this public support system that will be challenged more and more in the coming future. All major British cities, especially London, face an overwhelming number of immigrants due to economic underdevelopment in countries such as Brazil. It has come a time where we must change perspective. We need to stop looking at immigrants as a whole, but as individual people who each have a specific story and their own hopes and dreams. Building up from here may allow constructing a more segmented big picture, which may help to integrate immigrants in a more appropriate and individual way. In a large city, it is easy to lose sight of the importance of the small details, having different meaning and value for our fellow citizens. Considering individual needs, aspirations and abilities, we should be able to utilize society's resources in a more effective manner. Maybe we can keep Juliana's journey in our minds when thinking of the big picture, which is about to change big time.